Welcome, everyone. I am so excited. This guest is probably um, one of the ones that I'm most nervous about, which I shouldn't be because, like, I know her. She is literally one of my best friends, but also long term. I've been on her team long term, like y'all, like long term. But I guess because I'm so excited, because I want you to see her as I see her. And I want you to know all the things about her. And I have so much to say, but I'm going to keep it into a 20 minute podcast, I swear I'm not going to like overdo it. But if you know me, you know, it'll be a hard thing to do because when I love someone, I love deep and I love all the way and I can tell you all the mean things why I love this person. So without further ado, that is Kathy Howard, my amazing friend, um, client, been a part of our team for uh, like eight years now. She is a business and money mentor. And I'm going to tell you, I dare to say she is one of the best. I've seen a lot of people in this industry, a lot of people in the business. And when I tell you that you need to follow her, you know, you know, you need to be following her. So, Cassie, welcome. I'm so excited to have you here. Oh, my gosh. That was like one of my favorite intros ever. <laughs> I mean, I love you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> so I, I'm just going to dive in. I like to ask the questions I feel like other people won't ask just because you can hear a regular scripted podcast anywhere. And this is not it, y'all. This is the place where I'm going to ask the questions that other people ask. And I, one of the things I love about Cassie is that she's not afraid to tell you. And what she tells you is the truth. There is no filter um, with it. So with that, let that be your PSA. If you have young kids in the, in the background and listening, like Cassie doesn't wear a filter and that's how I love her. And I would not want her to be any other way. So I actually want to ask you a question. Does it bother you or scare you or ever make you feel like you shouldn't tell people that you started in the porn industry and that the things you learned in the porn industry brought you or taught you lessons that you use today because I feel like a lot of people would be like I would be afraid to tell that but you're not you tell it you're very open about it and I tell people when I tell you the story I tell them so tell me does it ever cause you to be like maybe I shouldn't have said that or maybe I should not be as open god no <laughs> In fact, I'm like, let me tell you about one of the best experiences in my life. And they're like, what? I love talking about it because, I'm number one, I'm proud of it. There's no shame. People think that I should feel shame or, like, a lot of people do feel shame. I don't feel any shame. I feel gratitude because of what I took from that industry, like, what I learned from it. So I love talking about that part of my journey. I think sometimes there's, depending on the person, there might be a feeling of, like, I hope they don't judge me for this, or I hope they don't think less of me for this. Sometimes that will will come up, but it's never like, oh, I shouldn't, or I'm afraid, or I'm embarrassed, or, or there's nothing like that. I love that. And so I, I, was I one of those people that you were worried that I would judge you? Because I feel like where I'm, sometimes I'm so very open about something that sometimes people think that about me that I may judge you like, y'all, yeah, you know me, you know, I don't care. Um, I, I always ask you all this. No, I didn't ask the question. <laughs> And and honestly, I have this feeling now, too, where it's like, yes, sometimes I might be like, I hope they don't judge me for this. At the same exact time, I'm like, if they do, I don't want them in my life anyway. So I'd rather know now. Yes, I agree. And that leads me to something super important that I like to talk about, that just because someone can pay you or purchase your one-to-one, your package, that doesn't mean that they're the right fit. And you are very clear about that and I have actually witnessed you refund multiple six figures to people before because it wasn't a good thing you started like the more you you felt like that was not going to work and so can we talk about that about you don't have to say yes to every person that wants to work with you and you don't have to accept payment when they're purchasing this or you can send that money back and be like this is not the right fit for you or me yeah and I think it's important that we do that in the beginning I think it's like people are kind of afraid to do that because they're like, but what if I never get another client again? But, and I had the same thing early on, but what I learned was you, there's always clients, there's clients everywhere all the time, all always. And when you refund somebody or you say no to somebody, you don't even take their payment in the first place that, you know, it's just not a good fit. It's not going to work. You make space for the right person to come in. If you like taking on five clients and they're all the wrong client and now your time is capped and you only have so much you can spend and you're spending it all on these clients that are not a good fit. Now somebody who is actually the right fit comes to you and says, I want to work with you. And you have to be like, I can't. And so now you're just working with all these clients who are the wrong fit for you. So I think it's important. And 
at the same time, though, in the very beginning, I think you should work with lots of different people because you don't know who you is the right client until you work with the wrong client. Preach it like that. We should have that on a T-shirt. Mm-hmm. And so like when you're working with people and I think you and I have seen this because one thing about Cassie and I that is just it blows people away. So Cassie and I are, or Cassie and I are like could be further ends of the spectrum as far as like faith and Christianity and things like that. And it blows people's mind when like when we tell them that because it just like yin and yang in a way. So do you find it is important to like, let's say you are let's say like me, you're very, very faith based to still work with the people who are not because that doesn't mean that person just because they believe different doesn't mean that they're not a right fit for the work or the client. So when you're talking about them not being a right fit, you're not necessarily talking about their personal or self beliefs at all. No, no, more so how they operate within the business. So for me, being a, like a business and money coach, it's clients who want to learn how to build their business and make money. But if somebody comes in and they are like, you know this about me that I'm very, very vegan, <laughs> very much so, very, very, very <laughs> with a capital V. And I work with uh, one of my private clients is like, she calls herself a carnivore. Like She does not even eat vegetables. She just eats meat and she eats a lot of raw meat. I'm like, what the fuck? Wow. I never in a man, like never. But I'm not like mm, wrong fit because we don't talk about meat and vegetables. Like right. we don't talk about that. We talk about business. So I don't care what you choose to do with like your food. I don't care. I care about how we're gonna work together in business. So if it's something that would affect that, then yes, there's the right clients and the wrong clients. But if it's something that's just a personality thing or a lifestyle thing. It, it doesn't matter to me. Agree. Totally. And I love that. You, wow. Carnivore. But I love that you did that now because it really, you are totally a total vegan with that COVID for sure. Um, so my next question is when you've got those clients and it's hard and you've been in the situation, because I've been it with you, like we've been like in the trenches together and it blows my mind at how you handle things because I'm always like, I could never have done it that way. How do you, how do you feel that you choose the wording so that, cause you never, and, and I love this about you never want to hurt anyone. You're always like, I don't have to make it like, like you, like you're literally a big teddy bear. So how do you tell someone that they're not a right fit? So it's not a personal decision. It's, it's just a bit, it's not, it's literally a personal decision. Like how do you tell them that without making them feel like it's them? Like it's, that they're not good enough or they're not fit to do the work that they're, they're not good enough for your world because that's never what you said. So how do you, how do you tell them that? I, I find most in most cases there's a relief on the other end because they felt it too. Yes. So that's really helpful. But there have been situations where it was kind of like they were blindsided. They had no idea that I had felt that way. But the way that I approach it is I will tell them like I love you. I love the work that you do. I like it has has absolutely nothing to do with you. But I want you to have the best experience. I want you to be able to get the most out of your mentorship. And I don't feel like I am the person who can help you to do that. It's like, I just, I want the best for for the client, whether it's my client or someone else's client. And if I can't be the best for you, I don't want you to be with me. I want you to be with your person who's going to be able to give you the best that you deserve. So it's, that's always my approach. And I love that about you because you're literally basically putting your ego aside and saying, I may not be the best for you. And I think that a lot of people in, your industry, my industry, everyone's industry, they get this, I'm, I'm the best. I am the best, and I know it, and everyone should be working with me. I, but I love that you literally say, I may not be the best for you. And that is okay. That's okay for them. It's okay for you. And it doesn't mean that you're not great at what you do at all. It just yeah. means that this person is not the best fit in your world. So let's talk about being in your world, because I think what can happen when people get in your world. Um, and I think that you're one of the ones that I learned most, 100%. And I'm just back on the hill and say to get in rooms. And I feel like I did, I'd heard it, you know, some of the things you hear all the time, but until I witnessed it, I guess that's the difference. So you can hear things and you can witness it. And I don't feel like you ever, ever like totally embody something until you witness it yourself. And so when I was with you in the room, getting in the rooms with women who talk about business, women who talk about building businesses and not other women, women who are making the money that you want to make, I don't know how to say it. Like, I don't know what to say. I've heard the conversations. I've been, you know, behind the scenes doing, you know, part of Team Cassie work with you. And, like, 
what the heck are you doing? Like, it's magic. I, do you have like a little bit of magic? Yeah, part of it is, I really feel like part of it is like magic. Like, it's like, it, I, I can't even describe it sometimes. It's like, you just have to, you know, when people have like inside jokes or whatever, and they're like, you had to be there. It's like that. It's like, you have to be there because I can tell you all day and all night how important it is to be, not just be in the room, but be in the physical room. Like it's, it's, there's nothing like it on the planet than being in the physical room with other people that are doing these big things and being surrounded by people who are, you know, chasing these huge dreams that you are also chasing because as an entrepreneur, especially an entrepreneur with like really big dreams, you tend to be surrounded in your regular day-to-day life with people who aren't like that. And so we can't grow if we're surrounded by people who are just okay with average, you know, and they're just okay with, with where they're at, we can't grow. So we have to find our people that will, you know, be able to be able to tap into that with. And I found that there's just nothing like being in the physical room. This is why I like to do in-person stuff. I just don't do it very often because energetically it's a lot for me. But when I do it, it's like I, I somehow I'm just able to bring together a group of women where it's like once we're in the room together, magic happens. Like every single event that I've ever done. Literal magic. Like I, you know, cause you, you know, I'm a math person. Like I'm a one plus one equals two, except for when it doesn't. And then there's probably some kind of fraction about like, I, I, I watch it and I'm like, I need to see this. I need to see, put it in my hand show me how we're doing this. Like, where's your script? Where are our documents? Where's our itinerary? Like I need, like my little math brain is always, like, what did you do? I know. And it so, can't sometimes. sometimes you will say to me, you're like, okay, but what's the itinerary for day two? I'm like, I don't know. We'll figure it out. <laughs> and it's amazing. And, and I, like, I can't, I could never, that's something that I feel like I could never do because I don't have that. Like, I'm not a business coach. I'm not a, a, a anywhere coach at all. And so I feel like that is one of the things that I feel like embodies you as being so special because you have this ability to create this magic that no one can say. This is how she does it. This is what she's doing. Like it is something that happens in the room with you. And it's happened even with me in my personal life, my business life with you. Like the things that you said to me, I was like, it's like mind blown. And I, I'm saying thinking, well, how does she know to say that? How does she know to ask me that question? How does she know to like push that button on me just enough to where it triggers me to want to take action, but not, you know, curl up in fetal position and cry to push me far enough to do something. So when you're when you're in these rooms, like let's say, because you have an event coming up, right, April in Toronto, yeah. and let's say that someone is watching this and they're like, well, maybe I want to be in this room. What? So for me, as an introvert, what can since there is not an entire like an itinerary or like a guideline, what can I expect when I'm coming in, or what should I be? What should be expected of me? Like what? What do I do? I mean, I know to show up, but what is expected of me, and what should I expect? Okay, so the first thing I want to say is I'm also an introvert, <laughs> so you're being, you being good company, <laughs> and I find a lot of times the, the women that come to my events tend to be introverts, I've noticed this, I don't advertise it this way, but this is just what tends to happen, so we all get together and we're all like, oh, I'm an introvert, I'm, like, oh, I'm an introvert, and so that like, <laughs> creates conversation right there, but the other thing that I, I feel really proud of with the events that we do is like, I have like you guys there, I have my team there. And I always say, like, you've heard me say this to you and to, to, you know, Erica and Alicia and other people, like, make sure that when people come in, they feel welcome, make sure that you ask them questions. Like, I don't want anyone to feel like they're just kind of standing there with their back against the wall, like, go and just talk to them. Because sometimes, for me as an introvert, I don't like to initiate conversation. So if somebody just starts talking to me, then I feel good. And I feel like I can continue. So it's like, I, I make sure that you know, my team is there and we're all, if I'm not talking to a person, that there's somebody talking to a person and nobody ever feels, you know, left out. But I also am open to if somebody asks us, like, what what's the plan for day two, for example, like, I'm okay to like, this is, you know, roughly what we'll do. But I don't like to have anything too strict either. Because Again, as an introvert, I, I want to make my own plans. It's like if I want to leave after an hour, I want to be able to do that and not be stuck in the middle of something. So people are always welcome to ask and we can give, you know, as much information as we can. But I think the most important thing is like just knowing that when you come in, 
to an event with me, like I'm going to make you feel so welcome and so heard. And so will my team. And so will the other women. Like, I don't let just anyone come to these events. Like I'm very picky. Sure. It's true. So you're hearing us talking about the team. So Alicia is the other. So I'm one half of team Cassie. Alicia is the other half. And then we have like other people, but the two of us are like the two that work closest together. And Alicia is definitely not an introvert. Like I, yeah. I love that. Yeah. Because yeah. where yeah. I'm a lot, Cassie and I are literally in so many ways, we're like this. Um, whereas I'm like, Oh my gosh, getting anxiety is coming at me. And Alicia's like, well, I'm on it. And she's like out there already down there in the lobby bringing people up, which it's just great to have that. And so I want to know, like, let's say I am at 5,000 a month in my business and that is brand new to me. And I, this is a big deal. I, and I remember when I personally hit 5,000 a month, I was like, I've made it. I'm at, I'm at the top, you know, I'm at the top. Can I still be in the room with other people who are making six, multiple six figures, seven figures, or will I not fit in? I also think it's important to be in the room with people who are well beyond where you are, because how else do you grow if you're surrounded by people who are at the same exact level as you? Like you want to be in rooms where you're a little bit uncomfortable because you're like the baby. You feel like the baby of the group, essentially like that. There's so much learning potential there. This is this is how I choose my mentors, too, is like I want a mentor who is like so far ahead of me that I can't even fathom being where she is. Because that's how I get there. And that's how I've been able to kind of quantum leap to the point that I'm at now is by putting myself in these rooms with people where I'm like, holy shit, like I am so like little, little itty bitty baby. And I like, I don't know what I'm doing. And everybody seems like they do. Like that's how I learn. It's, it's so, so good. But also you learn more from people too than just the money piece. Like I've learned from people who are making way less than I have, have or less, less than I am, but I've learned things from them that aren't related to money. Cause obviously I know how to make money. I know how to sell. I know how to do that, but I'll learn other things from them. So it's like, you, you don't just go into it with, this is how much money I'm making. And this is how much money everybody else is making. That's one piece, but it's also, there's so many experiences that people have that there's lessons there for you. So it's just letting yourself learn whatever you're meant to learn. I agree. And I think going into these events without and, and I'm talking to the crystals of the world without your notepad and your plan to write down exactly what you're going to do when you leave. Yeah. Your three bullet points. Yeah, you have to. And this is hard for me. So everyone listens. If you're like Crystal, I can't do that. I get it. Like I, I still have a notepad all the time, and I'm always trying to jot stuff down. And I get it. But I feel like going into the event with a plan that you know you're going to sit in your chair and you're going to write it down and you're going to have a plan of action for when you leave and you're going to do implement these three strategy tips and you're going to go home and make the money. That I feel like that is where. So many people are missing it because still that technique is still being taught and I see it. And I'm, I, for being in the rooms with people, you obviously, of course, for one, and then the other women who make more than them, I'm like, okay, I'm doing it. Not, not the best way. That may have worked a few years ago. But now, because obviously things are drastically different in the world and social media, what we did five years ago doesn't work today. It just doesn't. And I know that on social media, and I, you know, obviously, of course, being a social media, I guess myself, I have to talk about social media because you do social media drastically different than anybody I've ever seen in my entire life. And people ask you, I see it when I'm working like the, the customer service emails, people ask you, they're like, how do you do that? How did you post this post and you get all these people purchasing them? They're like, how do you do that? So obviously you can't, no one, they can copy you, but the paste is never going to be the same. We know that people have tried it over and over to copy you and the paste is not the same. So for anyone watching this or listening, if they are wanting to do social media in their own way, what is like, what do you think is a great way for someone to like tap into that? And because I don't even know how to describe what you do. I feel like sometimes your social media posts are so bold. Like I get scared. I'm like, Oh, I'm getting nervous. And I'll send you the gifs of the nervous gifs. And yeah. those are the ones that like blow up and go viral. But if I posted that, I would get blocked. And so <laughs> how do you know? How does someone know? Maybe how much they can do or how far they can go, how much, how, can, how far can you push it without getting blocked? I think the key is to not care if you get blocked. That's the key. That's it. That's because it. I really take away. I don't like, I, it's funny because I don't want people to be mad at me or to not like me. But then on the other hand, I'm like zero fucks given. 
like a hundred bucks given and zero over here. Like that, I kind of have both. And so when I do these really bold posts, sometimes it's usually because I'm at a breaking point. Like somebody said something, something happened. I'm like, I'm going to say, I'm going to say the thing that everybody else is too afraid to say, but everybody is thinking that's why those posts get shared. Because if you share a post like that, it's like, well, I didn't say it. Cassie said it. So go yeah. ahead. I'm just sharing it. But obviously, if people are sharing it, it's because they feel the same exact way. So it's like being a trailblazer. Like you've got to say the things that everyone else is too afraid to say. But you don't have to be an asshole about it. You know, like that's the thing. Like unless that's your brand. If that's what your brand is, then yeah, because that is for some people that is the brand. But if you just want to say it, you can say it. But it's like said with love. <laughs> you know, like you can be bold with said with love. And that's it. Yeah, if people are going to block you, they're going to block you. It's like they clearly aren't meant to be in your world anyway. So who cares? And I, I feel like everything we're talking about comes back to the right people will find you and you will find the right people. And I, I feel like that's hard for the new person starting out because you don't want to ever turn anyone down. You don't want people to not follow you or to not, or you don't want people to block you. You want, I mean, I think we all want to be liked, you know, in general. I think that's just a, Especially a female thing. No one wants to be, you know, alone. And so speaking of like what we're doing, what we're not doing, for anyone that's just starting out as a business coach, what is, what's a lie that she's being told right now to do or say or believe or act upon that you're like, that is complete BS. Like you're literally being lied to and the other people aren't going to tell you. So I'm going to tell you what's, what's a lie, like a big lie that's just She's following. Where do I start? I mean, there's so many. There's so many. Um, I can't. The one that bugs me the most is when people say, you know, you have to give a lot of free stuff first, then you can sell. So it's like you have to give and give and give and give. Okay, now you're allowed to sell things. And I'm very much like you give and sell, give and sell, give and sell at the same time. It's like, well, I just started my business today, so I should probably create content first, do some free stuff first, then I'll sell my first offer. No, sell your first offer from day one. It's like, why are you, there's no reason to wait. That That's the one that drives me crazy. And I've and never I think, liked that. And I learned, I actually learned from you that I'm allowed to sell. I'm allowed to sell every day. Every single day, every day. Yeah. And you were the one that taught me that if I don't tell you what I have for sale, no one can buy it. That's, I learned that directly from you. And I, I repeat that all the time. And you have never been afraid to sell. Like, I, like, cause, I think we've talked about this many times. I came from like old school network marketing where it was 80, 20, you post 80% personal and 20% business. So eight posts have to be personal to can be business out of that mixture. And you're more like 99 sales. And I might give you, I might show you a photo of my new dog here and there. So like, (laughs) Kathy has this new dog. You need to go to her Instagram and follow it. His name is Leo. He is like, right. Yeah. He's a protection dog, but he is like, I want to snuggle him, but he might eat my face. So, so what do you say to those people that are, that are like afraid? Because that was me. And I've only, I've been in your world for eight years and I've only just started like really trying to, to do that. Cause I was just so scared, you know, cause you, you it's just beating your head. Don't, don't sell, don't sell, don't sell. What do you say to like me? Like, I mean, I know what you said to me. I should probably share with the boxers, but like, you're talking to me. I'm like, what do you say? Crystal, what? Like, I'm afraid to say, I'm afraid to post. People are going to unfollow me. They're going to be mad. Well, I, the, the thing that I usually say to people when this comes up is, when's the last time you did that? When's the last time that you unfollowed somebody because they offered something? Unless they like cold pitched you directly, that's different. But if you just got a sales email from somebody, like, the only reason you would unsubscribe is because you've received a bunch of them. And you have zero interest in what they're ever selling of all those emails. Then it makes sense that you would unfollow. Why would you follow somebody who's selling things that you have no interest in learning the things that they're teaching? But I I get sales emails every single day of the week. I got it. I got two emails yesterday from Old Navy. I think the last time I shopped at Old Navy was like four or five years ago. I get emails all the time. I just keep forgetting to unsubscribe. But it's like, I'm not looking at it going, how dare you send me an email? (laughs) Like, clearly, this is a business that what they do is sell clothing and other items. So, of course, they're going to send emails. And if they're having a special promotion, they're probably going to send multiple emails to make sure I saw them. 
So I'm not going to unfollow unless I'm like just not interested in whatever it is that they're selling ever. That's the thing. It's true. I mean, it really, really literally hits home when you start talking about it. And so for anyone that is new to Kathy's world, Kathy, um, she doesn't have a freebie. We don't have an opt-in page. Um, we don't have a sales page aside from like just the cart. We have the basic entreport cart. We don't have full on sales pages with template copy. We don't have any of that. We don't have like a nurture where you like sign up for this free. We need it. sequences and we don't have any of that. You don't, you don't have like a full on website where people can go and learn about you. We have an evergreen page. Like you literally do everything the exact opposite of what everyone else is teaching. But what blows my mind is that it freaking works. And it works well. And what what I think is important to take away from that is that it works well for other people when they start duplicating what you do. Like when you start pulling things down to the bare minimum, it's working for your clients. I see it all the time. Yeah. And so how, how do you, when someone comes to your client and they're like, well, you're not going to teach me how to set up my funnel or my nurture series or my sales page, or, what do you say? No. I mean, the thing is, is I actually could, I could teach them how to do that because I know how to do that. I used to do that many years ago. I just, I would want to know, why are you coming to me? Because I don't ever teach that. I don't ever talk about that stuff. So am I actually the right person for you? Or do you, do you need somebody who actually specializes in this? Because there's people who do specialize in building funnels and, you know, doing things that way. So that's the first thing is like, are we actually a fit? If that's the question you're asking me. But also, I think it's like I like to do this through my content, like the education of why it's not actually necessary to do any of these things. I'm not saying that you shouldn't because I think sales pages are great. I think funnels are great and I think they work. I just don't like them. Like I think I just don't enjoy them. That's why I don't do them. It's not because they don't work. It's because I just don't like doing them. Even though you've tried to get me to do nurtures all the time. Many times, and I'm like, yeah, maybe one day. But until I'm excited about it, I'm just I'm not gonna put forth the effort that's required to actually make something successful. So if it's something that people want me to help them with, I can, but I wanna make sure that they're doing it because they genuinely enjoy it, not because they think they have to do that to get a certain type of outcome, because I'm evidence that you don't need those things. Literal proof. And you because of you. Every time I sit down to do any of my sales pages or anything, I sit and say, do I want to do this? Because Kathy doesn't do it, and she does fine. I, I ask myself that. Have, we should make a brace of what would Kathy do. Um, and, and you're right. I do all the time. I'm like, hey, do you want me to create this, this new pursuit? But I enjoy those. Those are fun to me. And so I love that you say that you can do it if you want to do it. And if you don't want to do it, here's proof that you don't have to do it. And I love that because sometimes we get, and I'm sure you, We've seen it so many times with your clients because I see it with your clients because they'll talk about it. They feel like they have to. They can't put out the offer until they've done the six week nurture series and they have talked about it X number of times and like then they're full on like a launch phase. So they can't talk about it. And you're always like, what the hell? Just yeah. do it. Yeah, just do it. And that's, that's, oh, that should be my slogan, except I'd probably get sued. <laughs> <laughs> But that's really what it is. Like, just do the thing. I want to sell this thing, but first I have to create the branding and then I have to make the search. Just go slap up a link somewhere and say, I have a new program. Here's what it's about. Here's the buy. And like, you'd be surprised at how many people are like, oh, that sounds interesting. I'll buy it. You know, and if they have a question, they need clarification, they'll ask. But you don't need to give it all in advance. You can. And again, there's nothing wrong with it, but you don't have to. And that's what I, I just want people to know that you can really simplify this. So many people overcomplicate business and that's what messes them up. And that's what, that's why it takes so long, if ever, to make really incredible money in the industry is because you're trying to do everything in a way that requires like a million steps when it's just not needed. It's true. And just a little behind the scenes from Team Cassie, I couldn't tell you how many times Alicia and I get a box that says, oh, hey, I created this link. You're probably going to see it on stories. And we're like, what is it? And she's like, oh, I forgot to tell you. It's this new thing I'm going to put out all the time, all the time. And because she does not go in this, in this fashion, this order that everyone says you have to do. And I, I, I think that's what draw, maybe that is what draws a lot of people into you because you do do, you know, we all like that, almost that rebel side, that person that marches to the beat of the drum and like, you may play this song, but I'm over here listening to this one, and it's going great. Mambo number five is going on nonstop over here. And so 
if someone's coming to you and they want to work with you, how can they work with you right now? Are you like, can they work with you one to one? Can they do you have any masterminds? Like, it's like everyone needs to be in your world. So I'm just going to take it now. You need to listen next for what she says on how to get into her world because you want to be in there. Oh gosh, I mean, I the honestly the best places to be are the inner circle and the club. Like these are the best places. I don't like the mastermind that I have coming up is an eight week mastermind that starts in April. Um, that one is like super limited. There's like only eight spots for that one. So that one might even be full by the time somebody reaches out about it. I don't know, but and private, I'm not really taking private clients right now from, you know, you can do a one-off session, but that's pretty much it. Um, inner circle and the club. And that's what I would recommend. The inner circle is like all the things you come into all the programs for a whole year, all the master classes. Um, there's two tiers to the club. One of them includes um, masterminds. So you would get this eight week mastermind that's coming up. Um, and also there's twice monthly group coaching calls in that. Like there's lots in the inner circle. And that's more so you want to learn, but you also want to have the opportunity to ask me questions and get personalized feedback and coaching and stuff like that. And then the club is um, there's Q&A opportunities, but the club is more so it's like ninety nine dollars a month and you get access to recorded trainings. And I do um, everything personal development in there. So it's not so much business. That would be more inner circle, but it's more personal development. So it could be a good like starting point if you're newer. Yeah, I love it. And so I I just have to say the inner circle, um, I, I and you know this what I'm about to say, you know, so I'm, I'm always like, stop adding to it. The value is is so big, stop. Like she's always like, Crystal, I know you're gonna be mad, but I've added this to the inner circle and I'm like, stop. So mm -hmm. the value I, I don't even know I don't even know how to explain it when I would say that there's so much in there for what like the price of the inner circle, it just blows my mind. Literally yeah. blows my mind. And one of those places where it's like you are, and I don't say this lightly, you are batshit crazy if you're not in the inner circle. That's how I feel. Like it is that you learn every everything that you need to know about building a coaching business is in there. Everything you need to know about making money is in there. And then you also have the coaching call. Like it is just insane what's what's in there for the price. It is. And so, I mean, and just to give you guys an example, I figured out the offers that were included just from august to november of last year just if you want to purchase the offers that kathy put out from august to november it was forty thousand three hundred thirty three dollars if you want to purchase those offers yes oh, that's why i'm always like she's like no i'm the queen here we're putting this in here like, that's a lot forty thousand three hundred thirty three that's a lot for just what like five six months um so and, I, and there's actually a program at, in the inner circle right now that they could, if they join, they could access it. It's called the five, five payments and beyond, right? That's, yeah, five payments. That is, I've got a couple that are my favorite, but I talk about this one a lot with Kathy. That model two transformed my entire social media presence and how I speak. So that doesn't work. It's right today. It's my favorite. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay, perfect. I love it. It's my absolute favorite one. I, that, you know how like, you just pick up things like it just like it's like you were talking just to me that module was literally for me that module is worth like the price of the program if you just got that module it would be worth it because it i mean i could give you numbers on when i started implementing what i learned in that i could give you numbers like financial numbers that blow your mind versus what that the price of that program is it would blow your mind you could literally look at my page and know when i started implementing that module i love yeah. it Oh, I love that. Okay. So I am not going to keep you. I'm going to be with solar respect of your time, and I'm Leo may need to go on a walk. Um, <laughs> so if you want to follow Kathy, I'm going to have her links ready for you. Um, I'm just going to tell you, if you learn anything from me ever, follow her. She has been in my world for a long time. There's a really fun story I may tell one day, but basically I knew her before she knew me. I was following her long before she ever knew little Crystal Honeycutt existed. I actually was at an event in a room with a bunch of people who are making more for me. And one of the questions that was asked was, um, who would you like to work with this year that you would like to have as a client on your roster? Who would you like to be in a room with that is an inspiration to you? And I was like, oh, the yeah, outward. And I was and, and I was like, I'm actually going to be a part of her team. I literally said that. And one of the people said, oh, my gosh, is she hiring? I was like, nope, but I'm <laughs> going to be a part of her team. And 
what, a few months later, Cassie actually put a post out that she was hiring, and I, standing in the Victoria's Secret line to check out, I said, take your post down. I'm the one you want. And I did. <laughs> and I was like, it's me. Hi. And it's I'm the most there. bold you've ever been. Ever. You'll never see that again. You'll yeah. never, never see that again. That was the one time. <laughs> That was, that was all of it. You got you got 100% of my bulk in. And like, but that was like, I was, I had gotten in a room of people that had asked me the tough questions and I had made that statement. And that is literally just an example of how it can change your mind. So get in the rooms with people, you guys. Kathy has the, the Toronto event coming up in April, mid April, I think, like the 16th, somewhere around there, 17th, somewhere around there. Um, get in that room because even as, Again, someone working behind the scenes as team faculty and not an active participant. So people might, I'm not an active participant. I'm not sitting, having, I'm listening. I'm just listening. I'm not actually included in the conversation. I'm behind the scenes. I learn a freaking lot. And that is without being an active participant. So I can't imagine what I would have learned being as an active participant. I mean, I'd be like, the magic is just like oozing out of my pores at that point. So I want to put that information below. I'll be there. Alicia will be there. Kaz will, of course, be there. Um, the rest of the team will be there. It's you just just be there or be square. Is that really corny to say? I think it was. Yes, Whatever. It works. It works. Anyway, and it's the truth. So, if you already know how much I love you. You transform my life, my business. My, I mean, just so many things. You are definitely one of my best friends in the entire world. You're the person I'll call if I have an emergency. Just help me. I'm going to see. Um, thank you for doing this with me. I cannot wait to see what 2023 holds for you because I have this gut feeling that if we do it a year from now podcast, we should actually do that a year from now. Mm -hmm. And yeah. just that we really find because I just have a gut feeling of things that are happening and you blow my mind every day. So I love you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. So